Hi, second graders. My name is Ms. Kesnick and I teach at Oreo Lane. Um, this is actually my first year of teaching, so um, it's nice to meet all of you and I'm so excited to be working with all of you today. Um, now today, I'm actually gonna be showing you your opinion writing checklist and I'm actually gonna pull it up on my screen um, so that you can see it. Um, and when you click on the lesson plan, you can actually pull it up on your own screen and look at it as well. So let me just pull it up for you quick. All right. So here is our second grade opinion writing checklist. And this is really what we're gonna work towards um, for this next part of our distance learning. Um, and this is kind of what you can go to all the time to make sure that you're hitting all of the things that we really want you to make, want you to hit during our opinion writing um, time. So to start, um, most of you have probably seen that we always, almost always start with a lead in our writing. Um, that is so important because that is basically how we catch our reader's attention and get our story going. Um, in the sense of opinion writing, um, it's really important that we have this beginning because it also in our lead part is where we're going to give our opinion. Um, and that's really going to set our readers up for what they are going to expect us to try and convince them of. Um, so this is the part where you really just need to push what your idea is that you want them to um, go along with. Um, the next part that we can see here is transitions. Um, in second grade, the three main ones that we really like to see in your opinion writing pieces is because, also, and another. These three words are great words that connect all the parts of our writing together uh, just to keep them flowing nicely and to make sure our story is really, really going smoothly. The next part in our checklist is called our ending. This is another piece that we see in almost every single checklist that we've looked at this year. Uh, the, Ending in a opinion writing piece is just a little different because uh, we really just make sure that in our ending we're reminding our readers of what our opinion was. We wanna start with what our opinion is and then we also wanna end with it just to make sure that they understand totally what we really want them to believe. The next part of our checklist is called organization. Um, organization is really just the part of the checklist that makes sure that we have different parts throughout our story. Um, and it really makes sure that we write across a whole bunch of lines to get us all the way through an entire story. Uh, the different parts that you kind of see in organization for an opinion piece writing is introduction, reasons, examples, evidence, conclusion. Um, the examples and evidence that we see in an opinion piece writing are really parts that are gonna back up our reasons. So um, again, those will just be things that we're trying to convince our reader to either believe are good or bad or whatever the case is. If we scroll down a little more, we see the next part is elaboration. Um, this part is for the opinion piece writing is where we want to write more than one reason. If we don't use more than one reason, it might be kind of hard for our reader to be convinced that they should change their opinion for something. So we have to write at least two reasons and write at least a few sentences for each of those reasons. And those few sentences right here are actually gonna come from our evidence and reasons. Um, I mean, evidence and examples. Those are gonna be the places where we write a few sentences to really, really, really try to convince um, our readers what's going on. Um, the next part of our checklist is craft and in a uh, opinion piece writing. Craft is really what's going to make, um, choose words that make the reader agree with you. Um, so if you are trying to convince them of something to be really good for your life, maybe some words that you're going to use are good or um, nice, cool, uh, funny, good, good words that make the people believe that um, it is something that they should change their opinion for the better. If we scroll down a little more, we kind of work into um, those last few parts of spelling and punctuation. Uh, these are things that we've been working all year on second graders, so it's nothing really that new. Um, 
just make sure that you are using spelling patterns to spell a word correctly. Um, listen to the sounds that you are really trying to get out into your words um, and make sure you're using the appropriate tools that you can use. Um, I know we're not at school anymore, but just think about all those tools that you used to use when we were at school um, to be able to really try and spell those words as best as you can. There is no reason to rush and get through all these and then spell all the words wrong and have to go back and change them all. So just really try to slow down and spell the words correct. The last thing is punctuation. Um, so make sure you're using quotation marks for if a character is talking in your opinion piece. Some of you might put some characters in your opinion pieces. Also just make sure that um, you use, if you use words like can't and don't, um, that you are using that apostrophe. Um, which is that little mark, you can see right here, an example of it right here. Um, it's that little mark that goes in between the can and the T. Um, and so this is basically making a word that says cannot, um, and we're putting it together to make can't. So this is an example for you right here, and you're welcome to use this while you write. Um, basically though, our overall that we're trying to get at with our opinion writing um, and using this checklist is that we want to give our opinion of something, of whatever it is, and we want, really want to push the likes and dislikes and make sure that we give those reasons for the, the opinion so that we can really make sure that our readers um, are understanding our like or dislike. All right, so um, Next on my thing that I would like to do with you today is just, um, I would like to read a student sample with you guys. And as I read it, I really want you to listen and see if you can identify the parts of the checklist that I just went through with you guys. Um, so as I read, you can either have the checklist pulled up or you can also um, just try to remember some of them and maybe even jot some down as I'm going. And I will share some of the things that I picked out as well. So here is my student sample that I want to read to you guys. It is about a book called Valentine's Day Disaster. And um, this is how it goes. So here we go. Valentine's Day Disaster is a wonderful book because of caring characters, activities, pictures, bold words, and labels. To start, Cheesy Lou Sweet Snout is caring and cool. She is cool because she is a cow mouse and she loves heart-shaped stuff all around the world. She's kind because she offered to have her sing at Geronimo's party. Also, there are activities. It's on how to organize a Valentine's Day party. It looks fun and it's easy. Furthermore, there are colorful pictures to look at. The pictures that are very colorful go across both pages. Also, the pictures look yummy if they have food. Finally, there are good bolded words. When there are good, there are bolded words, I get to use excitement and some bolded words I get sorry, and some bolded words go in different lines besides a straight one. For example, a squiggly line or a shape or a heart or something. Finally, some pictures make me hungry. They look hungry because they are, look very real, very, very sweet, and very, very, very incredible. Like I said before, you should read Valentine's Day Disaster because it is a wonderful book. Wow, second graders, I really noticed a lot of different pieces in the checklist for that example. I noticed that the writer had an amazing lead. They really tried to give their opinion of the Valentine's Day disaster, and I knew that they were trying to convince me of what a wonderful book it was. I also noticed that the writer wrote a lot of different parts and used great organization. They wrote about the Valentine's Day activities, pictures, and then they even wrote about the bolded words in all different parts of the story. This writer also had an awesome ending. They really reminded me that Valentine's Day Disaster is a great book and I should really try reading it sometime. Finally, another piece that I noticed in on the checklist is elaboration. They wrote about at least two reasons why I should read this book. And for, for example, they wrote about the pictures and they wrote about bolded words. And when they wrote about these, they not only just wrote one sentence, but they wrote multiple sentences trying to explain it. Um, there were a lot of other pieces in the checklist that I saw, but these were just a few examples that I picked out for you guys. Now, it's your turn. Take a look at the second example and see if you can pick out parts of the checklist for um, opinion writing things. Good luck second graders and I hope that you're having a great day at home. 
um, keep up the good work. We are so proud of you.